Bigley and Murata. Bigley and Murata mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Bigley Blast. There was a time when I was terrified of Devin Booker asking out of Phoenix for the first half of his career. He was a life preserver in a sea of dysfunction. I knew how much he idolized Kobe Bryant, how much he loved the Hollywood celeb scene, and I always feared that privately he wanted to end his career in L.A. with the Lakers as the next Kobe. That fear subsided over the last few years, but after his chilling comment the other night when he used the word chilling to describe how the locker room was dealing with the loss to the Clippers you really have to wonder because Book is very smart and very savvy he's a nine year veteran he knows exactly how that term would be interpreted and he knows better besides there have been other signs this year and in other years he didn't speak after last year's playoff exit and on fan appreciation night you know who took the microphone who spoke to the crowd Ish Wainwright a guy that was just signed to the team in March. So is there fire behind all this smoke? Is Book unhappy with the head coach? Is he unhappy with his teammates? Is he finally getting a taste of that wanderlust that is so prevalent in the NBA? Look, I also know this subject triggers the legion of Booker fans in the Valley, but I also know something feels very different about him and this team this particular season. And here's hoping when this show hits the air on Monday, we're going to all feel a lot better about about this disconnected, broken basketball team we call our beloved sons. All right, today's Bickley Blast brought to you by my great friends at Chapman BMW who make luxury attainable. Find them online at chapmanbmw.com. When I think about the next big picture, I think of Bridges and I think of Booker. And I know, oh yeah, Booker's never leaving Phoenix. I just don't believe people are in the same place ever in the NBA anymore. We've been burned so many different times. And if I'm the Knicks, who's going to be unhappy end of April? And what he's getting at there is what basketball team is going to have a very abrupt end to their season with a lot of aftermath and a lot of shrapnel flying around. And he believes the Suns are definitely a candidate, and they clearly are. Because this is a very pricey team. This is a team that's leveraged up most of its future. And this is a team that came into the year with expectations of winning a championship. So this is where we're at. And and look, it, it's it, Devin Booker has proven his loyalty to Phoenix, Arizona. So I do not say these words or what I said in the blast very lightly. And I know they also do trigger uh, the legion of Devin Booker fans in the Valley. And there are many. But I do know that that, that postgame comment was a very, it was a jarring moment for sports fans in the Valley, not what they expected to hear. Uh, No. You call it the blast for a reason. You you blasted me right to the back of my seat here. (laughs) I I wasn't ready for that... uh... Well, that, the, that news about Booker might should've, wanting to go? She told you to buckle up, man. Uh, yeah, this, this uh, fire. doesn't You're need a seatbelt yeah, for yeah, sure. Fire, no. uh, you know, listen, I, I when Booker first got here, I thought he was a scrying little kid. He's never going to make it in the NBA. It shows you what kind of general manager I would have been. But he has really shown me that the kid is moxie. He's mm-hmm. a player. He's an all nba I think eventually... Uh, in another five years, we'll be talking about him being a Hall of Famer. So to have him being even contemplating leaving is a real blow to me this uh, Friday yeah. morning. It's a tough way well, to start my morning and, here. And again, it's just a talking point. It's not reporting. It's not predicting. It's just it's just speculative yeah. because we have nothing but questions it's, and no answers. Yeah, and it, and it is sort of something that you would think the national media who follows the NBA would see. You know, every year they're like, okay, because we're in an age of NBA where superstars. If they're not winning, if they're not happy, regardless of what their contract is, yeah, yeah, they they now control their own destinies in ways. Yes. So if you're if you're a general NBA fan and you don't watch every single game of every single team, which Bill Simmons actually might do, but uh, you say like, okay, which teams are underachieving? Which teams might have superstars that are unhappy? Unhappy. And you look at the Suns; they're one of, if not the biggest underachievers of the entire NBA. Yeah. And, and unhappiness seems to define them. And you also look at, we, we talked about um, the different various factors going forward for the Suns, how they're really all in probably the next two years. Mm-hmm. Because if you ever want to rebuild, ever, it's going to be hard to trade a rapidly aging Kevin Durant. It's going to be hard to trade 
a always injured and really expensive Bradley Beal. So you're one great, 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 great trade chip. If you ever wanted to mm-hmm. rebuild and get back some draft picks, would be Devin Booker. And, and again, I don't think it's something the Suns would ever do voluntarily. I mean, you it, what, what you just laid out there is very, very plausible. But but I don't think it's something the Suns would ever consider. This would have to be something that was driven by the player. And and bring and for Bill Simmons to bring up that New York example now, it's it's again in a, in a league in which unhappy players do exactly that: pull the ripcord and go someplace else. Everything about the Suns team, if you didn't know any better, you would say, yeah, they might have candidates. There, this is not a happy place. And I and the the performances are all there in front of you to see. Now, as as we also said, Devin Booker was engaged in that second game against the Clippers. He was very good. He was the star of the team. So I, I'm going to hope that this is nothing more than an unfounded fear. But again, I'm not alone in believing that that he's been a little bit different this year. He's been a little disconnected this whole year. People have told me it's because Kevin Young, his guy, was was basically in line for that job until Frank Vogel was hired late. Okay, that's a long time ago. And it, Kevin Young is still on the team. And Kevin Young is still on the team and an assistant coach. And and, and so, again, it's we don't have any concrete answers. We still don't have answers as to what happened definitively to this team in 2021. So, it, it's it, look, this is the NBA and everything is on the table. Do you think, we, we talked about this yesterday, Scott, that this is probably the first year in his career that Devin Booker did not get better year to year, and he's definitely not having a better season than he's had last year or the year before. Well, that, that, but, that generally happens around year nine. I mean, you've kind of plat, you kind of reached your plateau at year nine, so yeah. I wouldn't expect him to see gains like he saw in years three, four, and five. Here, years nine, ten, and eleven, he's going to stay where he is, and he's still having some really good basketball games. Mm-hmm. Where he, he's scoring the ball at a high efficiency. He's getting assists. Oh, yeah. And he had to, he had to take out a little bit of a different role this year mm-hmm. because he relied on him to play a little bit more point guard. So I don't see his play has dropped off. Not not. I don't think anybody in the league thinks that. He uh, statistically, he's had a ton of forty pointers. He's had a couple of fifties. He's had a sixty-two point game. Statistically, his season looks very much in line and even in places better than he's been mm. um but but in terms of just general impact it, it it's this this super team hasn't done what we all thought they would i think that's fair to say well, and that's in, and some, that's in wins right because yeah. right and bradley bill being hurt obviously slowed their start no one i don't think we expect him to mm. win 60 ball games after he missed so much time but we didn't expect him to be in seventh spot right now we don't expect them in game number 78 of the regular season, to need to burn three timeouts in the first quarter because the game is going downhill off the rails for me. You don't expect to call a third timeout because there's nobody in the back court to receive an inbounds pass. These are little things that scream dysfunction. Yeah, they don't Just look, in, in my opinion, they don't look any more connected and dangerous now than they did at any other point in the season when you're hoping, especially in the second half when they have been pretty much healthy, that they were just be getting better and better and better heading into the playoffs. Well, you wanted them to have that run like the Rockets had where they won 10 straight, like, yeah, like Golden right. State's currently doing where they've won 9 out of 10. And we just haven't seen that. We've seen, yeah, we've seen some, you know, 5 and 2 runs, mostly 6 and 4, 5 and 5s down the stretch here yep. that just have not given you that warm and fuzzy like they figured it out. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I thought a couple of weeks ago they were on to something. They thought they were on to something, and here we go now. So, again, the proof will be on the basketball court tonight and Sunday for everybody to see. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.